From thunderous big band swing to epic 80s triggered fills, the toms are by far the most widely varying component of the whole drum kit, changing with size, intonation, musical style, and of course, decade. Knowing the basics of Tom Drum EQ will allow you to control all of these variables, letting you craft your own iconic Tom tone. Most defining in each Tom sound is the fullness of the tone dictated by the body and the resonant heads. Since toms are typically tuned to drums, these frequencies should be easily identifiable. A rack tom tuned to an A, for example, will most likely benefit tonally from boosts around its resonant frequency of 220 hertz. A in a floor tom will most likely be an octave lower. Therefore, the body frequency would be around 110 hertz. While the A tuning is completely arbitrary, the ranges of 180 to 250 hertz for rack toms and 80 hertz to 120 hertz for floor toms are usually where you will find these sweet spots. The mid-range of toms tends to contain frequencies that most recognizably dictate the shape and size of the drum. Boosting in these frequencies can give you a very large and live sounding tom. However, boosting too much will result in making them sound overly hollow as the frequencies resonate inside the drum shells. Cuts to these frequencies, often between 200 and 500 hertz, depending on the drum's size, can eliminate some of these competing waveforms and clarify a tone for the tom. Again, usually focused on its tuning. Excessive cutting in the mid-range can remove large defining characteristics of the size and the shape, making the drum sound less live and recreating that recognizable 80s sound. The higher end of the mid-range, overlapping from around 350 up to 900 hertz, is often what is most cited as creating the cardboard box effect. If you find that you are experiencing dull, and papery sounding toms. These frequencies are often the culprit. Generally the stick sound or ping on the drum head resides in the areas of 5k, very similar to the crisp impact sound of a snare drum. Tight cue boosts and in small increments in this area can give you a nice transient attack point, for instance if you need to close down a compressor, without interfering with your snare sound. Cuts in this area can soften up the tom, giving it more of an overall roundness and sound. Extreme cuts can even create the impression that the sound was created with a rubber or yarn mallet instead of a stick. Like most drums that are not the kick drum, super low frequencies can be cut with a low shelf or rolled off completely to clean up unwanted low resonance and make room for the kick drum and bass guitar. However, Cutting too much or shelving at too high of a frequency can cause your tom to lose body and become lost and muddled in a mix. The opposite end of the spectrum, above 10K, is a very preferential area for EQing a tom. If you need to liven up your tom sound or give it some space and breathing room, then a small shelf boost can add air back to your sound. There is also an argument to be made for cutting with a shelf or even rolling off high frequencies. The cuts will have little effect on the tone of the drum itself, and the additional tonal real estate gained can be utilized by the overheads, which ultimately may give you more air and space in the long run. Applying these simple EQ techniques to toms can help you create timeless fills time and time again.